Welcome to this week's Pathway. So we are in Numbers chapter 30, where as Chad kind of read through the passage, we see that there are a bunch of different situations in which people are making vows and God is making sure that they keep them. But what he kind of drew out of it was that there's also a layer in which other people, particularly the father, the husband, and the household, were also held responsible not to be silent if it was a rash vow or a mistake or something where they should speak some wisdom into this. So I just happened to be sitting next to my daughter uh, as we were listening to the equipping message this morning. And so I kind of gave her a little nudge, you know, like, see, daddy's trying to be wise. I'm trying to help, <laughs> you know, when I give you advice, uh, which was a good reminder as a father and a husband, you know, the responsibility that I carry to be a helper, to be offering wisdom. But I thought one of the things that was encouraging from the way Chad kind of applied this for us today is not only is it the responsibility that God gives to the husband and the father, but that we can also begin to look around at our other relationships. Where might I be making a vow, making a decision without seeking wise input? Or where might I see somebody else about to make a rash promise or decision that I might be able to offer some godly input? And as he brought that idea home, I, I didn't want you to miss kind of the key takeaway he shared at the end of the message. Because this is what, for me, puts the whole thing into context. That we want to keep our commitments even when others don't keep theirs because God keeps his commitments even when we didn't keep ours. And so one of the things that is on the Pathway Guide this week, Dig Deeper number three, it just has a few passages that represent promises that God has made throughout scripture and a chance to think about what they mean for us. And then down in the pray section toward the bottom is just an invitation to take those promises, those scriptures, and just pray them back to God and thank him for them. So there's a few of them on here, but I think you'd also enjoy thinking of some for yourself. Honestly, this is the kind of time where sometimes I just Google, like, what does God promise in the Bible? and see how many amazing things come up and spend some time in prayer with him, thanking him for keeping his word like that, even as we're asking him to help him, us keep ours. So why don't we take a minute right now and just pray and thank God for the promises that he makes. Lord, we do thank you that when you speak something, we can trust it eternally. Um, like Isaiah 55 says, that your word never comes back void that it will always accomplish your purpose, it will always achieve what you sent it out for, that we never have to wonder if you really will keep those promises. That when you say you have forgiven us, that you have sealed us with your spirit, that you have a banquet feast prepared for us, and that you will bring us home and complete the good work that you have begun in us. Lord, we thank you for these promises, and we take hold of them in Jesus' name. Amen.